Hello, hello, hello! Welcome to Exotic Wine Travel. I'm your host, Matthew Horky. Today I have a very, well, I'm excited personally, and I'll share why. Number one is, we're, as of right now, when we're filming this episode, tomorrow we are taking off for our three-month trip through the Balkans. We're going to go through Serbia, Macedonia, Croatia, Bosnia, Herzegovina <laughs> to taste the wines there. Uh, and I'm really excited about that. And then secondly, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite old New World countries. Shireen's not as high on this country as I am in terms of their wines, but I love the wines here. And we're talking about Portugal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, Portugal is actually a very, very ancient history of producing wine. But when they came into the European Union, I think it was in the early 90s, that's when modern techniques were applied and so the waters, wines have become modernized but they're still got some old world flair. They have a diverse amount of climates, a lot of um, indigenous grapes that most people have never heard of. So uh, some of the exciting reasons are Alentejo, those wines are going to be fruitier. Uh, Dao, they're red wines but they also mix with a white grape so they're aromatic. Bajada, Baga, uh, these are big reds, and then Portugal's one of their most famous dry wines, or Vino Verde, or green wines. But today, we're going to talk about wine from the Douro. Now, the Douro region is typically known for the region where they grow grapes to make port wines, sweet or fortified wines, by making red wine and then mixing brandy in it to stop the fermentation, and that's why the wine becomes sweet. Some of the most expensive and tastiest wines in the world but they've lately been focusing on quality dry wines. So if you see, there's not a big selection uh, in most wine shops of Portuguese wines. If you see a Duro wine, get it. Even the baseline wines are going to be good. When Shireen and I first got to Portugal, we were blown away because when you go in the supermarket, the wines were as cheap as 90 cents euro. And a lot of times in the supermarket, they went up to maybe 10, 12 euro at the most. It was completely shocking. And then when we went to nice wine bars, we went to the Duro wine region. Top wines, you're spending maybe 25 euro. And these are wines that are, I think are far better than that type of price point. Um, first of all, I want to show you just a wine fact, not a Portuguese wine fact. If you go to a restaurant, you're getting a bottle of wine. This to me is a perfect cork. This one that I just pulled out of this bottle. You see how damp and purple that is? The wine has been stored properly. And then if you look at the sides, there's no leakage of wine. If you see right there, there's no discoloration. The wine, the cork did its job. The wine all stayed within contact there. Nice dark purple cork. When I see a cork like that, I get really excited when I pop open a wine bottle. So, let's get to tasting the actual wine. I've got a funny story about this wine right here. First of all, I'm going to show you what this is. This is a VT 07 from Duro, so obviously 2007. It's by made by Quinta do Sagrado. This is their reserve wine. Now, VT I assume stands for Vino Tinto, which means red wine in Portuguese. 07 is the vintage. Now, I gotta tell you a funny story about this. When we ended up in Duro, we stopped in this town called Pinhao, and it was right in the middle of the wine growing region, except the town was. Not conducive to tourism. It was one lane. It's kind of there's like may, there were maybe two hotels. The town had definitely seen better days, and there was an old guy with glasses waiting for us at the train station, and he just waiting. I think he was just trying to find anybody who stopped for his hotel, and we ended up going to his hotel, uh, which was awesome, cheap. The food was good. He had a nice selection of wines. His English wasn't that good, but all I remember is. He would go through wines, he said, this good, this good, this good. And then he pointed to a VT and he said, this, super good. <laughs> so he sold me right there. I At that restaurant, I had a VT06. This is the VT from 2007. Uh, 07 was supposed to be a much hotter, much better year in the Duro. So let's taste, get down to taste in these wines, this wine. Now, with Duro Reds, you're going to get nice black, inky, opaque color. Now, with Duro Reds, they're the same grapes as pork, pork grapes. So 
Um, sometimes they're field blends. Sometimes they're blends done on purpose. I do not know the great down, uh, breakdown percentage of this, but I do know it's uh, got Torriga Nacional uh, grape in it, Torriga Franca, Tinta Roriz, I think Baga, Tinta Chao. Uh, these are all Portuguese grapes. Tinta Roriz is actually known also as Tempranillo in Spain. So let me give this to Shireen. Now the first thing, the first thing that we're going to see here is the wines. When I was in Duro, I felt like my teeth were constantly stained because the wines are so black and they're blends. As you can see here, super inky, super dark color. Let's give this one a smell. I'm really excited about to try this because the VT06 was one of my top two favorite bottles while we were in Portugal. So let's try this uh, VT07. What do you think, Shireen? I'm amazed that this wine tastes consistently. No, smell, same. smell, smell. The first thing that comes out is that ble um, berries and ashes. And sour cherry. Ashes, smoke, sour cherry, a little bit of cedar, a little bit of cedar, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit of ta tobacco, mostly black cherry, mostly black berries. I mean, this is a nine-year-old wine, so uh, the, the flavors have all melted together. Let's give this, let's give this a taste. That's one thing I'm really excited about. As you can tell, I'm super excited about this. Um, blackberry, but almost blackberries that are, are mixed. It's almost like you have mixed ripe blackberries with some tart ones. And then a little bit of sour cherry because the acidity is just beautiful in this wine. Incredibly beautiful. Um, The wood is integrated beautifully. I know it's aged 15 months in French oak. The mid palate towards the end palate, you get a nice spike and sour flavor before the long end palate. What do you think, Shireen? The end palate is very long and the acidity is still very fresh. Yeah. In a good way. The acidity is, this wine is, all, for, this is what gets me so excited about Dura wines. I know there's been a big push uh, by American publications, Wine Spectator, Wine Advocate, for Portuguese wines because they're such good value for money wines. They have the darkness and the richness of Bordeaux, uh, California cabs, but they have this beautiful acidity that you get with central Italian reds like Sangiovese. Would you agree with that, Shireen? Okay, so um, Shireen's not as big a fan as Portuguese wines, which is okay. I personally love this wine. I don't know what the actual score is. Uh, I'm going to put this for my palate. I'm going on limb. I'm putting it 93 plus points. I agree from, with you. I mean, I think this is uh, awesome wine. I'm so mad I was not doing the show when when we were in the Duro. The Duro is this beautiful river. The slow, the, the banks are deep. Forty. I mean, they're deep, high banks. About 1,000 feet go straight down. The vineyards are terraced. Uh, everything's harvested by hand. I don't even know how the grapes and the wine are so uh, are so cheap. It's super hot there, even though you're pretty high uh, and you're on the Atlantic Ocean because mountains block the cold air from coming in. From what I'm told, Duro grapes, just buying grapes, selling by a ton, are the most expensive grapes in the world because it's a harsh environment there. So I, uh, I went on and on about this video. I'm really excited about Portuguese wines. I wrote an article about the Duro, I'll link it below in the description box. Do yourself a favor, go out and try some Duro wines from Portugal. If you find it in your wine shop, you're gonna get some in the 10, 15, 20 dollar range, and they're gonna be great. Uh, I hope you like this video. Uh, please share with your friends, subscribe at our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel, and I will see you in the next episode.